Today we're going to be taking a look at nautical charts and I'm going to show you how you can use one to work out what's on the seabed. It's especially important for things like anchoring where the holding power of your anchor is going to be heavily dependent on the nature of the seabed. For example, sticky mud is going to provide a much better holding ground than large banks of kelp or something that the anchor might just slide across. So it's very important you know what's underneath you. Of course, looking at the overview of the chart, there's not a great deal of information because we have to zoom in a bit. At first glance, it, it looks a bit sparse, but if you look a bit deeper, you can actually see there's little letters everywhere like this little S, meaning the seabed is made of sand. Look, we've got another one here and another one here and another one here and another one down here. There's loads of them all over the chart that um, they're just telling us that that is just sand. S isn't the only letter, of course. So, for example, up here, we've got another one. We've got an M. No prizes for guessing that that's mud. We've got more sand down here, look. And then if we keep going, we've got this one, which is an SH. I always get want this one mixed up. It actually stands for shells. I keep thinking it means shingle, but no, the international abbreviation of SH is it's for shells. There's some more of them just here, and you can start to see them all scattered around once you're looking deeper. If you look in here, you can see that we've got a mixture of sand and shells. So when you've got them together, it mean, just means that there's two different things making up the nature of the seabed there. Look, we've got more sand and shells, more sand and shells. Down here, we've got three things making it up. So we've got the S for the sand, the SH for the shells, and we've got this new one, CO, meaning coral. More shells over here, more sand, shells and coral over here. Here we've got some more sand and shells. Down here is just plain sand, more plain sand. Here is another letter that we need to know, the P. P just stands for pebbles. So we've got pebbles and shells. So you can see the nature of the seabed is just changing all over the chart. I'll just keep circling some, but you can pause the video and just have a look for how many you can find. and. It just gives you so much information about everything that's there. As the chart shallows up, you can start to see the nature of the seabed changing. Although up here we can see there's still shells on this chart, we've actually got a lot more of this RKY symbol around. You can probably already guess that that stands for rocky. It's not actually an international symbol though. The RKY is um, it's a US or it's a NOAA specific symbol. The international version would just be an R for rocks instead. Then we've got a few of these kicking around, so we've got an H down here. So this is just saying hard. Normally that's uh, it's what's known as a qualifying term, so it gets put in front of something else, but sometimes you'll see it just on, charge, on charts on its own, so it's just telling you that seabed's hard down here. The SO over here and here is telling you that actually it's soft. So again, there's more here, so that's probably moving in with the rocky and maybe a bit of the shells and things from before so we're just expecting a soft bottom down here look there's loads of them there anyway it's all very well if you already know what these symbols mean but if you don't how can you find out well this is where a thing called chart one comes in in the us it's chart one in the uk it's chart 5011 but what it is is it's basically just a booklet giving you all the symbols and abbreviations that they use on paper and electronic charts from page 49, we're in section J, which starts talking about the nature of the seabed. So you can see the S's that we've had on the previous examples, which are telling us about the sand and the, the M's for mud. There's down here, we've got the shells as well that we saw. And we've even got this R and the rocky. The rocky over here and the R are just all meaning the same thing. They're all meaning rocky, but of course the RKY is the NOAA equivalent of the international symbol R. As we're using the NOAA charts, we did expect to see the RKY, and that's what we saw. Flipping over to the next page, we start to see some of those qualifying terms that I was on about. So we've got the H down here for the hard and the SO for the soft, and often these will just be in front of something else. But sometimes, as we saw in the other chart, they could be there on their own. Of course, as chart one is a US publication, we've got loads of pages that are just the specific NOAA examples of loads of different things that could be on the bottom of the seabed. I don't know about you, but I get confused once I see so much information. I mean, we're on page 51 at the moment. So what I've done is I've broken all this down and just put it all into an easy to read article on my website where you can actually download a cheat sheet. 
It's free to print off, so just go and grab it if you want it. And all I've done is at the top here, I've done all the basic international symbols, so the sand, silt, pebbles, boulders, mud, all the most common ones, and then you hit the qualifying terms. So these are things that will often go in front of something else. So you might have BKSH, meaning broken shells. Next to that, you can see how they merge together. So broken shells would be BK dot BK dot SH and so on. And you can see you can just join them all together like that down at the bottom. I've added in all the NOAA ones because I know a lot of you are based in the US, so you'll probably find all these useful as well. But all it does is it puts everything there on the same page, just making it really easy for you. Otherwise, I hope you found this video useful today. I aim to publish new content every week, but I can't always guarantee it. So it's best if you subscribe and turn on notifications, then you'll know whenever I post new content. So until next time, thank you for watching and goodbye.